G'day guys and welcome back to another episode and this is going to be a bit of a different one where there's going to be no fishing action and that's just because I just wanted to show off this bait that I put on social media a few days ago and got a fair bit of interest in um, how to make it so what I'm going to do is run through this little thing here and how to make it and then how you can turn it into one of these little lovely dewy lollies right here. Okay, and so what we're looking at here is a South African style floating, rattling, dingle dangle. So the South Africans have pretty similar conditions to us in fish, but they have a really interesting approach to um, beach fishing. So it's a bit of a rabbit hole you can go down if you're interested. Um, one notable channel is Zuluk Fishing, who is pretty informative and has some great content as well. So give him a suss if you're interested in this type of thing. But a dingle dangle is basically anything where you're going to connect your hook to either pass through the bait or next to the bait and then connect a sinker to and what it's going to do is allow the bait and the sinker to be in line and connected and it just allows you to cast that much further as well as they take um, a bit of the pressure off the bait so you can really chuck them really hard without worrying about them coming off um, which is really good for these squid because if you know if you just put two hooks through and then you try and belt it it might go one way and then your rig will go the other. Just as a side note, so this is um, just single strand uh, 105 pound wire. And I used this smaller version of this in a previous video to cast pilchards in a long cast rig. You can also just use these to slide up the back of the squid, up his belly, all the way to the top there. And then you're gonna put a hook through there have a snell rig, put another hook through the front and then connect that to your sinker and it's just going to allow you to cast far and um, not have your squid coming off. But these ones here, they're um, definitely worth having a look at, worth building. These aren't too hard to make. You can probably knock up a few of these in 15-20 minutes if you sit down and have everything ready. And um, you can make them to different sizes. So this size is going to suit these squid, which are these style here. These are apparently from the same um, stock over in America. They're just, you can just get these in a smaller box, but I wouldn't pass these up for a dew bait, even though they're a frozen squid, they're really good. You can also make larger ones if you want to use fresh squid, if you've got a few of those and you just want to present a bait this way. Before I go any further, I just want to encourage everyone to release the vast majority of their deweys, um, especially the large ones ones which could be potential females um, and can produce a lot of eggs. And I'm not saying this because this is a gun bait and you're gonna start catching heaps of them. It's because our dewy stocks are in pretty dire situation at the moment. Um, and they have been for a while and have remained so even since the um, changes to bag and size limit for the recreational and commercial sector. And before anyone gets on a high horse about it's all the commercial um, sector's fault, Every year, the estimates are that the recreational sector takes just as many, if not more, deweys out of our system. So, look, if everyone does the right thing for a few years and starts putting them back, they could bounce back really well. And how good would it be to actually have these things not be as much as the unicorn as they are and start getting a fair few bigger ones? Would be awesome. Join the Research Angler program, the tagging program. It's free. It's free. Um, and yeah, put them back. That's all I can say. Rightio, so what this thing is, is surfboard foam, 90 pound wire, a crimp, a couple beads, and what I've done is cut the foam and inserted a little glass rattle. Look, if that's all the information that you needed, you can skip forward to this time right here to see how I put the bait on. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is go through step by step how to make this one now. All right, the first step is we're going to take some surfboard foam and cut it down to size. Look, it should be pretty easy to source an old surfboard, put the feelers out for someone who's just broken one, or you could visit a second-hand board shop and probably pick, one, pick up one for pretty cheap and you're going to have a lifetime supply. Otherwise, you could probably buy it, I don't know. 
but uh, yeah, it should be pretty easy to source. So first step is we're going to put the hole in it that we're going to use to put the wire through and then trim it down to size a bit. So I know that this one here suits the size of those squid that I want to use. So first off, I'm just going to cut him down like this. And this is just a small um, computer screwdriver. I think I picked up a pack of these for dirt cheap from like hot dollar or hot bargain or whatever it is. And we're just going to put him straight through the middle of the foam here. Just like that. And then I'm just going to cut down the edges a bit. It's easy to overdo this step and you don't need to take too much off because we're going to sand it next to get it down to the right shape and the sandpaper cuts through it really quickly. So we're just going to take off a bit, get it roughly down to the shape you want. And next, I'm just going to sand it. This is 60 grit sandpaper. And you're just going to keep it on this and get it down to a shape that's roughly equivalent to that. So I'm not going to show the whole thing, but the sandpaper cuts through it really quickly. So it doesn't take you long at all. So I'll come back when I've got it down to the right shape. All right, there we go. Got it shaped down. So next step is we're going to put the glass rattle inside. So what I like to do, just because I'm a little bit OCD, is just mark it, put a line there, the thickest part. This actually helps if you want to make um, bigger baits too, which I'll uh, show you why in a little bit. But we're just going to mark it, slice them in half, and just use this thing again. I'm just going to poke a hole for the glass rattle to go in, just like that. Voila, and here's the glass rattles right here. So these are the bigger ones that Atomic make. Oop. And you just hear how quiet these things are on their own. But then when you put them into the foam, it amplifies it. So we're just gonna take that, squeeze them in. Just like that. Next, we need a bit of super glue. And I like this stuff right here. And for putting my soft plastics on the jig heads, this is good stuff. It won't, um, won't gum up on you. But we're just gonna put a liberal amount here on the foam. Putting back together. And then holding together and I just do a little um, bit around the outside as well. Just to seal it up. So we'll do that and then I'll let him cool down for a bit. This is where I'd be working on the next one while this one um, cools down, but I'm just gonna make one today. So we'll come back when that super glue's dried. So the last thing I'm going to do with the foam, and I've already done a little bit, is just take a large screwdriver and we're just going to gouge that out a little bit there. And so that's the end that's going to be going down to the sinker. And before I started doing this, when I just had the wire kind of coming to the end there, I just found that it would tear through a little bit. So now when we put the wire through, this soft bead is going to sit in there a bit and just stop that from happening. Anyways, the next step is we're going to take our wire and this is just 90, 80 pound um, nylon coated wire. So we're going to take our length of that and we're going to crimp one end. And these little um, single sleeve crimps are the go. Just get cheap ones. And 
just want to pull it down to size about yay big and then we're just going to crimp him make sure you've crimped him good next i've just taken one of these soft beads and cut about a third off it i'm going to put that on And then that is going to go through the top of the dingle dangle. Next, we'll take our full bead. And you will see how that sits in there. And if it wants the kink during casting or anything, it's going to be the, the bead that uh, puts pressure on the foam and spreads it out. And then lastly, the last crimp. Gonna trim this down a little bit. And that's about the size I want to um, go on my sinker release. So we're just gonna pull the length that's going through to bring it all tight, nice and tight. There we go. And you do want to um, have these in line like this. If they're not lined up, you can just twist this um, and line it up at this stage, but that's looking pretty good. The very last step is put on a little bit of um, heat shrink on this top bit where the hook's going to go, and that's just going to stop it falling off on you. Because if you put all this effort into making it, it would suck to uh, cast him out and then just have it come off. Let's get the light up. Oop, there he is. And there we have it. There is the finished Dingle Dangle. Not too hard at all, and again, you sit down and make a few of them, it won't take you long at all. All right, I'll show you how I like to bait them up. Okay, so what you will need to wrap your squid around your dingle dangle is some latex cotton. And this is the only one I've tried, but it works really well. I'll try and find where I got it and link it in the description. Black Magic Bait Buddy will suffice um, and you can get it anywhere but this latex cotton is just stretchy and it squishes down onto the bait and um, yeah it's a, it's a bit better. First thing I'm going to do is take the head out and what we want to do is there's a couple of muscles and a bit of guts so there's those two muscles that I was talking about and you want to keep those connected. So I'll put that to the side and next we're going to take the wings and skin off our squid tube. Could leave it on if you want but i think just having that white flesh in the water is going to be a bit better next we'll cut him open get rid of the guts and then what i'm going to do i will get rid of the quill as well And then what I'm going to do is give him a tenderize with this mallet and that's going to get lots of scent in the water and it's also going to help it um, bind to the dingle dangle. So I'm just going to give it a light one but you can give it a fairly good bashing depending on which squid you get and you kind of want it to be not quite falling apart but you know quite bashed up. That'll do him. And we're gonna flip him over. And we're just gonna wrap it over our dingle dangle. I'm just gonna shorten this up slightly.
So you want it to end kind of right there at the end of the ding dingle dangle. So we're just going to pick him up and roll him on. Just like that. Next, we take our latex cotton and you want to wrap it on the way that the squid has been wrapped on. So you're just going to pinch and wrap him around like that. So I'll start midway, go to the bottom, and then we're going to go all the way to the top. It's a bit easier when you're standing over it, it won't hook up like this. This might seem a bit fiddly, but it's a bit easier when you've got it lower than what you are. Then we're going to come halfway back down. And there's a couple things you can do with the squid heads. If you make your dingle dangle tapered enough, what you can do is just butterfly it. That's what I'm going to do with this one. Otherwise, you can cut the squid, the uh, head, right in half and then put one side on each side of the dingle dangle. That is a fair bit fiddlier. Um, just butterflying the heads is a bit easier to, um, to grasp because it is quite slippery. So we're just going to flip him over and we're just going to butterfly him right where that siphon is. We're going to go halfway through the head and then all the way through that, like halfway through that siphon, just like that. Voila, we'll take the beak out. There we go, our butterfly squid head. And we're just going to drape him over the, uh, the dangle like that. You want to have the eyes just on the uh, very bottom of the, the um, dangle. So then you kind of hold it upside down and it's going to keep these guts in line. And I'm just going to do some light wraps. If you do too tight to start with, it's going to smush the squid to one side. Then I'll go back up a bit tighter. There we go. Then we would just want to do some ties right behind the eyes. It's going to make them bulge out a little bit. And then we want to skip over the eyes and just do right underneath them, just on the tentacles. And that's gonna make the tentacles flare out just like that. Um, what I've done is I've actually got his candlesticks. So we'll make sure they come out. So there we go. Now, over the tentacles, it's gonna flare them out. Beautiful. Lastly, we're just gonna do a couple half hitches down over this bit that attaches to the sinker. Break it off. Yeah. And there we have it. Where are they? Look at that thing. Beautiful. And so the idea with this is that you'll connect it to your sinker, you'll cast him out, and then this is going to sit up in the water column and as waves bash it around it's going to get the tentacles flowing it's going to get the rattle going and she is going to be prime you'll also get a little bit of glow from the glow beads down here an awesome awesome bait what i'll do now is i'll show you how i would um use a larger squid where you're probably not going to be able to use the head because it'll be too big and what you can do is you can make tentacles out of the uh, tube. But that is the way I like to do these smaller squid. Absolutely gun. And so what I do is I'll make one of these out, chuck him out. And then while I've got that sitting in the rod holder, I'll be making up another one. And that way, when you bring your bait in, it's about as quick to change over a bait as putting on a slab bait. Very quick and you're back in the water. Okay, if you've got larger tubes and you want to throw a bigger bait, 
or if you want to use the same size one what you can do with this line is you're just gonna get your dingle dangle on the side of the bait have that in that up position and you're going to roll it across and you're going to know that's going to fit the uh, dingle dangle there so we're going to pretend we've done that and now we want to make a fake head out of a squid tube so what we're going to do you want it to wrap most of the way around the dingle dangle and we're just going to go down like that then we're just going to give it a bit of a point as such and then what I'm going to do so that's going to be where it's going to be on the dingle dangle so from about here I'm just going to cut straight down the middle just like that and then you can just cut keep cutting like that and you've got kind of four six feelers whatever it is but what I like to do now, this is just something I've been messing around with. Whether it works or not, I'm not too sure, but I like the idea of it. We're going to come down and then we're just going to cut in and make it a bit like a, a, uh, a bit like a paddle tail. I'll do the same to the other side. Come down and cut in. And there we have like the two candlesticks and the idea with making these a bit like a paddle tail is that they're going to be wafting in the um in the current next we'll just make two more smaller tentacles four more smaller tentacles and then i'm going to give it a little bash just this bit up here just to um allow it to bind to the dingle dangle i want to keep these pretty tough because if anything's going to come and peck along at them, like a brim or a salmon or anything like that, they're going to attack the tentacles first. So um, I want to keep them as tough as possible. And when you do notice that your bait's been hit, you'll bring it in and it's going to look like this, or something like this, and a bit of the head's just missing. And I just chuck a new head on them. Seems to, seems to go all right. After a while, I might make up a, a new one, but that seems to do okay. So we've just got our fake head sitting on like that. Gonna take our latex cotton, put him over, pinch him, and then just start wrapping. And same thing, we're gonna come down just kind of pinch over the bottom of the dingle dangle just as such a couple half inches snap him off and there's our bait without using a head still looks amazing there you go as a very last thing what i'll do is i'll just show you the the um hook setup that i like using with these guys i'm not going to show off the rig that can be for a part two when i actually get a chance to go fishing for some jewies i'll show you the rig that i do like to use um, it's very similar to the long cast pilchard rig but i'm just going to snell up some circles and show you how i'd put it through the bait okay depending on the bait um change your hook size but for a bait that we just made i'm going to use the 60 bkk circles and some 50 pound fluorocarbon so for the bottom hook i like to snell on the bottom hook too i just think it's a better um connection than having it coming up here There we go. Uh, 
and I like to have a fairly long trace. It kind of depends what your rod can throw. A fairly long trace. And then just going to do like a knotless snell for this top hook. What you want to do is take your bait and see about how far we want them apart. So that one's going to be going through there. We want that one right about there. And what I like to do is have the hooks facing opposite directions. So it takes a little bit of practice to, to get it perfect. But what you'll find is when you tighten up this knotless snell, it um, tends to bring the bottom hook around a little bit this way. So you kind of want it nearly at the back, just like that. And we'll do the knotless, knotless snell knot. Two, three, Pull him up, and as you tighten that, brings it a little bit further around. So that's good enough. And then I'm gonna have the top hook going towards, I guess, the belly of the bait. first time going through these shrink wraps a bit tight and then this second one we're just going to pin through just down at the head just like that and there you have it guys the South African style my version of it the floating rattling glowing dewy lolly hope you've enjoyed if you give it a whirl and get one let me know we'll be absolutely stoked as well as any other comments i'll make sure to get back to you but there you have it hope you've enjoyed and i'll catch you next time hopefully when we get to use one of these and we get a big old dewy see yous